Uh, so the real yeah. reason PFT probably came in here is he probably heard that you had sex on Everest. So let's get to that <laughs> well, part of the conversation. I, 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 you mounted Everest? I, I mounted Everest. <laughs> mounted on Everest. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Extra Dosing. We got Donnie back from his big trip to the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. And with him is Tyler Carnivale, at Tyler Car Carnivale on Instagram, uh, to talk about their trip, what they got up to. Like, let's just get into it. Uh, why did you let me try that mad honey if it did what it did to you on the video? <laughs> that, that I can't believe you let me do that. Because I knew the amount that you were taking was a safe amount. But what if I reacted differently? Uh, well, no, that was because terrifying. So, because when I took the mad honey, I did it with one of Tyler's friends, and he only had two spoonfuls, and he was fine too. Like he was feeling it, but he fell asleep, and he was fine. It was just that third teaspoon that really fucked me over. Um, so I knew if you just had one, you'd be fine. Yeah, but like, also, why did you take the third? Tea like, you've taken edibles before, right? I I I think I just like started to get a little worried that it was going to be a dud of a video after two because I, I wasn't feeling anything. But I think if I had just waited an hour and a half, I would have started to feel those too. So yeah, no, I mean, a very dumb move. Whenever trying a new drug, <laughs> you got to wait at least an hour and a half before taking any more. Now we're also with Michelangelo, mm -hmm. yes. uh, cameraman yeah. uh, for the whole experience. Michelangelo, when he's puking on the floor and like tweaking out, like yes. what's going through your mind? Like, are you are, are you about to call nine one one for? I was um, <laughs> preoccupied recycling uh, puke buckets. I think Donnie <laughs> filled up about four, and I was kind of just shuffling them between Donnie's mouth and the toilet. Um, but there were probably a couple of hours where Donnie was laying in bed asking me to find cures on the internet. Uh, and I, I did not find any at one point he did ask me to call the hospital, but, uh, I did not get in touch with them. Eventually, <laughs> he fell. Asleep. Did you even try to call the hospital? No, no, I, didn't okay. try. <laughs> I wouldn't have known where to start with the, the area codes and the country codes and stuff. But, uh, luckily, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were you like paralyzed? <laughs> um, I, I just like, like every time I moved would just be a crazy head rush. And so I was just like most comfortable lying on the floor puking. Yeah. So for those, uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out Donnie's video on trying mad honey in the Himalayas, but it was insane. I mean, yeah. like, and like to think about it, did you trip when you were no, on it? No, I did not trip at all. It was all just body sensations. You said it was like nicotine. Was that? No, I said it I was like my body hit a menthol cigarette because you just had at first like a like a really strong cooling sensation flow through your body and then it turned into a warm sensation. So I compared it to taking a bath in icy hot cuz you're 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 getting waves of cold and then waves of warm. Jeez. Uh, yeah. How were you the next day? The next day I felt fine, although I would still get like random waves th through my arm. <laughs> the following day like i was um but i did say i felt i felt like kind of cleansed i mean it is it so i was like googling it after that like it's a neurotoxin yeah <laughs> yes it is like, it ingested neurotoxin Tyler, have you had better experiences with the with the bad honey i didn't get no. to try it like when they i wanted to and when they uh did it i i was i think i was asleep for like 18 hours straight and i missed it yeah um so. probably for the best but I think it's wild, like Joe Rogan, he has yeah. some in his podcast studio and he'll just like hand a spoonful out to random guests and it's like, he needs to be careful with that too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like imagine if like I finally got invited on Joe Rogan and then like I do three, t like, three <laughs> teaspoons, <laughs> just like, ruin, the, ruin the opportunity by puking on the floor. <laughs> One was nice. I would do it again if I, if I like now that I'm know how I'd react to it. When you say nice, what, what does that mean? I was giggly. Oh, really? Yeah, I just started oh. like I, I just like I was trying to I, my mind and I start like I couldn't formulate thoughts when it first hit me. And I like if you go back to the podcast where I did it, I just like stopped talking for a while and then I just start giggling. And then like I'm like Mad Dog, you talk. And then I'm just like trying to look like I'm like normal, like act normal, act normal. Like, but it was it was fun. But so Tyler, uh, 
Yeah. You made it to base camp. I made it to base camp. Tyler made it all the way up to the summit. And Dude. you're you're coming straight here from the summit. Like you climbed it a week ago or? Yeah, I summited May 16th. So like, yeah, matter of days. For, wow. For those on audio, Tyler kind of has a, a weird tan almost. Yeah. Which I'm guessing, <laughs> is that like from like wind and frostbite? Sun, wind, frostbite. Uh, basically the whole top layer of my skin on my face froze off. Jesus uh, yeah, Christ. Died. Was it like, what was the, the hardest part? The altitude, the cold, you know, the the exercise and the climbing, like which factor was the worst out of those three? It's going to be different for everybody. But uh, for me personally, it was the cold by far. Not even a question. Like yeah. when, once you're on the mountain outside of base camp uh, and you start going up, it's like in the negatives every single night. So, and into the morning. So when you wake up, you're kind of nice and warm in, in the sleeping bag. The only part of your body that's exposed is your face and the condensation from your breath freezes uh, uh, around the rim. So like you have snow and frost on your face. And oh the last thing you want to do is fucking get out of the sleeping bag. So the hardest part is to like find the motivation to get out every morning. And you're doing that for days on end. And it's just brutal. So Jesus cold. Jesus Christ. Put on cold gear as soon as you get out. It's not fun. Why, yeah. don't, you, why don't you put your head in the sleeping bag? <laughs> you got to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like would you take your clothes off at, at the end of the day to get uh, to get in the sleeping bag? For camp one and camp two, I would. I would get down to like my base layer. But once you're at camp three, you just keep your summit suit on and get right in with that. Yeah, it's just so cold. Yeah, no, no the, I couldn't imagine taking the summit suit off. Does it go base camp, camp one, camp two? Yeah, camp, okay. And then camp three, camp four, summit. Wow. So, what's the process like? You're going up and down up and down like that's something that i thought once you got to like you just go up once but it's a whole process so when you you go up twice essentially uh the first time is for acclimatization it's like mm -hmm. called your first rotation you go up from base camp to camp one spend a night to camp two spend a night and then come all the way back down and that's just get your body used to less oxygen and then come back down, take a rest either at most people go to Lukla, which is a little town in the mountains further down or you go to Kathmandu spend a few days, come back, and then you wait for a good weather window, and that's when you go up for the summit push. So you go up and down uh, twice. Whoa. Did you see a Yeti? I didn't see a live Yeti, but we went into this um, monastery, this this temple on our way up, and they had what they uh, called a Yeti skull and hand in this little box that were religious objects. Oh, whoa. Oh, shit. I walked into that monastery and did not know there was a Yeti skull in yeah. there. Damn it. it was in a little wooden box. I think okay. they usually have the door up, but they were showing us. Oh, wow. And I mean, I don't know where they would have gotten it because it was a huge skeletal hand. Wait, whoa. Yeah. So they show it. Do they don't let you pay, do they let you take pictures? No, you can't take pictures in, inside. What did the skull look like? It looked like an orangutan skull. Like if you were to like kill like a great ape, like your gorilla or something, it was uh -huh. like that with a little bit of Wait, hair on it. Wait, now we're going to get into specifics. <laughs> All right. So, so I, I saw have a signs for this. Did it have a large cranial crest? Yes, it did. Like a very large it did, one. Yes, so I know like exactly more, what you're talking about. More gorilla. More gorilla, yeah. More gorilla. Yeah. Huh, because orangutans, I don't think have, we're going to, we're going to get into some skull talk. <laughs> did it have it, large it, incisors? Uh, it was only like the top of the skull. So you didn't see okay. any of the jaw or anything. Okay. But uh, it was super wow. convincing. Like, I I would love to poo-poo it, say this is, this is bullshit, but it looked like a real skull I mean, of a Yeti. If anything, it's a... Is, it, is this it? Or? That's that's exactly it. That's exactly oh, what it okay. looked like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, because I think this is a photo of it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so it's a it's the top of a head. Is yeah. that is that bone or is that hair? It's like the skull I mean, with some hair on it. Yeah. Whoa. Because yeah, the, the it could it could be Gigantopithecus. Like, it could be, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I sort of think the myth of the Yeti started with people just having hallucinations, like from the altitude. Mm. When you're like Actually, up on a, a mound point, and yeah. you're and you're suffering from altitude sickness, you do like he had a friend who started to hear things and see things and like yeah yeah. You, altitude. Okay. And it is, from the stories we had a little bit before the show, you're saying it affects everyone differently. What's yeah. like some of the strangest aberrations that occurred amongst groups when you were up there? Uh, actually, my good friend Jacob, who I was climbing with, he some of the, the day after me, um, he had been up in a death zone for longer than me. And that's when this start, stuff starts to happen. But he heard the voices of friends behind him that weren't there. He saw his family 
the rocks morphing into the faces and, and shapes of his family members, uh, like uh, like a psychedelic trip. Um, people like people's personalities change. Like you get up to Camp Four, and you could be a, a no- totally a uh, different person up there than you would be at sea level. Like your whole personality changes. You don't even recognize yourself anymore. It's pretty. Well, for better, or for worse, like, was there some like stone, like super serious people that got up there and started getting goofy? <laughs> Not that I saw, but I'm sure it happens. <laughs> yeah. sure. Like, like, is it like people get more fun? Yeah. I, I think someone we were with said like he called his wife and was making absolutely no sense. Like was, was that? Yeah. I think that, it was someone from the top of a mountain, like said that he called someone and she was like you like what you were saying to me on the phone like wasn't making any sense yeah yeah actually a friend I, I won't say who but she said that she uh i forget what mountain she was climbing but she wasn't using oxygen she just all of a sudden blinked and was in a desert and her sherpa slash guy turned into five dancing women it's like it's no Damn. joke up there yeah that sounds sweet yeah. <laughs> 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 but what if it's like you're traveling at that point you're like traveling to different dimensions. It's like a gateway. It's like oh, a portal. I could be true, yeah. <laughs> because like Everest is like a portal to another dimension. My and you just mate. can sneak peeks when you're up there. It's possible. Hmm. Yeah, that, that'd be a solid place to put a portal if you didn't want a lot of people going through. <laughs> I was a. Uh, this study came out that people who breathe less oxygen live longer. I just so, saw that. Yeah. yeah, people in states of hypoxia, which I think is a little bit of the whole altitude thing. There's yeah. not as much oxygen, of course, yeah. and like they live longer. So, I mean, we've all heard the stories of the Gurkhas and uh, how they have like pretty amazing health and their ability to travel to different uh, altitudes and just have amazing stamina because they're like red blood cells carry more oxygen. Yeah. The Sherpas. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. What was the wildlife like up there? Like what, what was your last signs of life when the mountain just turned into like a different planet? Uh, so I saw some mountain goats. I saw mountain goats, birds were up at base camp, a lot of dogs, but I think up at base camp, there were only birds that you'd see, right? There were yeah, no like- there, there were, there's also this animal called, uh, I think it's pika or pika. It's like this little rodent type looking thing up in the rocks. Uh, but like that's the- to the extent that you would see anything. Yeah. Like when you're pulling into the base camp, there's no more vegetation of any type. Um, it's just rocks. I will say that you get to close to the summit, like above camp four, and we still saw little birds flying around, like landing and- In this, on the summit? Yeah. What's the summit like? Like, is it is it a place? Is there anything up? That, like, is there any, like, is there a bench? <laughs> yeah, there's a, a snow bench that people have kind of like carved out. Um, oh, nice. And a bunch of flags and mementos and like people bring statues up and banners. So you get up to the top and you see all these prayer flags and stuff that's been there for probably years. Wow. And of course, the bodies. And the bodies, yeah. Yeah, I saw at least four or five bodies. Yeah. And what's that like when you're up there? It's surreal. Like, you know you're going to run into them, but you don't. Re- it doesn't really, can't prepare for actually seeing like a dead, almost mummified body up there. And it's like, someone who died in the 90s looking like they died yesterday just everything's super well preserved oh man are there there any like faces facing where you can see oh that's terrifying and you have to like literally walk over them past them like yeah the path is so narrow yeah i would say like inches away except on on let's say the fourth highest mountain which aldo climbed uh there's a body up there that you literally the ropes are running right over the body so you're stepping over the body and his face is white it looks like a kind of a wax figure is it facing you yeah just it's sitting there like this waiting for you it's like a horror that's like a horror movie ride yeah, yeah. like <laughs> theme park <laughs> tyler actually came across someone close to the summit who is on the verge the verge of death and nims luckily was able to save him what 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 was their predicament what was they highest altitude rescue in history so N- props to nims nims is fucking incredible um, he was a Nepali army captain. His, he went up with a team and I think they turned back and he wanted to summit. He went and summited, was coming back down and just kind of collapsed. And they were doing this the, the day before we went up. So we'd been sitting there for six plus hours, just in the snow, rocking back and forth. I thought it was a dead body from afar. And then you get closer and it's just a guy kind of comatose with no gloves on. Nims is like, he'll probably die because we'll get him down to camp four, but helicopters can't uh, get that high and rescue him. And he'll definitely lose his hands, and he wound up being fine. They got him down to Kathmandu, and 
Oh, so that was the highest ever? Yeah, oh highest my, ever. Jesus. And you watch the Nims' documentary, and they do a couple rescues, and it's like, holy shit, that's amazing. And then I witnessed the highest ever, and it was just surreal. So they always say that the helicopters can't get that high. But didn't someone land on the top of the... Yeah, it was a... Highly modified. Helicopter. French guy yeah. back in, in 2013 or, or 2003. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Su- Super highly modified custom... A uh, helicopter to be able to do that has to be perfect conditions. Uh, um, but like normal helicopters can't even get close. Like even flying from base camp down to uh, lower towns, we had to take seats out, bags out. You you can only bring like two people in the helicopter because of the weight. It's just wow. so much less air pressure that it can't generate lift. Mm-hmm. That's insane. So, I mean, I heard all these stories about people go up, but they on the way down, they that's when a lot of the deaths happen. Most because, people die on the way down. Because they don't have the same drive going uh down as they do going up because it's like they summit and it's like this big i don't know you've, yeah. you've done it yeah. i just read about it Wait, but... when you're going up and you see the summit you get like this rush of adrenaline you're like fucking uh booking it and then on the way down it's kind of like you just get this just uh you're drained and i could see how a lot of people die you're kind of just like fuck this like <laughs> at, at so many points i wanted to sit down and take a 30 minute nap but that's that's how you die yeah i mean the wow. fin- it's like such a false finish line because yeah. you're only yeah. halfway done yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you said like that last push, it took maybe seven hours to get to the summit, but only two hours to get down. Yeah. On the like way that? down, you can just, yeah. Fly. Okay. Was nice. your guide like convincing you not to take that 30 minute nap or you knew in your own head? I that, knew in my own head. Yeah. But like, cause, cause when we were coming up to camp three, I, I'd sat down just to rest, to rest. And next thing you know, I wake up and it's like an hour has passed. And I'm like, yeah. if this happens up higher, I'll die. So Shit. yeah, that's wow. scary. Mentally, how did you prepare? Cause like I would, I would be thinking of just the summit, the summit, the summit, the summit, just like, just got to get to the summit, just got to get to the summit and then die on the way down. I think N- Nims talks about extreme discipline. And I think that's the most important thing. Cause like the second your gear and stuff gets out of order or the second you start getting lazy and not wanting to get out of your sleeping bag at certain times, that's when shit will go south. So if you just stay disciplined, stay super um, tight on like all the administration, administrative stuff, you're, you're good. What was the shape of of the climbers going up like did i know there's a i'm a lot of people have said that everest is like there's been trash there's so many people a year that go and do it but like they they, i'm you know you gotta understand that a lot of people from all over the world that's the highest peak and they're trying to get there but like they make it sound like anyone can do it nowadays like how much training like we talked about people dying but like were there people in your group that you're like i don't think they're gonna make it yeah for sure uh, not just in our group, but like you look at people across base camp and you're like, how is someone like that going to summit? But honestly, I think the majority of it is mental. Like if you have the drive and you're willing to, uh, you know, exert the energy needed, you, you, you have it. Wow. Um, yeah. Like there was one person in our group and she was not planning on climbing Everest. She was going to climb a much smaller mountain, but a spot opened up on the Everest trek. Uh, and so she was like, all right, I guess I'll just go for Everest. And she was just like, she was a pole dance instructor back in Romania, I believe. Germany. Um, okay. All right. Well, I, th- I thought German she was- in Romania? No, she was from Romania and lives in Germany. Oh, okay. Now. And lives in Germany teaching pole dance classes, mm-hmm. not the stripping variety, just right, like the exercise. the exercise class. Um, yeah. And she was just like, at the very last minute, she's like, all right, if you're saying I can climb Everest, I'm just- I'm just going to go for it. And she summited. Wow. And, yeah. that, and that's someone who, if I, no offense to her, but if I saw her before summiting, I'd be like, I don't know if she could make it. Cause she never even climbed a mountain before, but she did it. Wow. That was like the craziest part of the entire trip for me is, is knowing that she had no intention of climbing Mount Everest. And then a month later she was at the top of it. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Well, I tried that. to convince these guys to climb. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, we, we didn't have the funds at the moment, but I don't know. I could, I could work something out. I could find a sponsor for next year. Still, still a blip. Yeah, I think for me it would just be the cold. Like my uh, my toes lose circulation very easily, and my fingers as well. So the yeah, that that would just be my main concern of my of <laughs> like losing my big toe. What's your uh, how bad? I'm scared of heights. Oh, that's that's not good. Are the heights? <laughs> are the heights like? The heights are bad. <laughs> yeah. And you wouldn't think they are because a mountain is like a big wide yeah, thing. Yeah. But like there are points when you're getting close to the summit of Everest where you look down to your left, um, kind of near the Hillary step section. And you can see camp two, which is thousands of feet below you. 
And people die all the time from sliding down the side of the mountain. I can't do Everest. That's the I can't do it. So, are there any just like yep, no, I'm done. straight <laughs> drops, or it would mostly that's, it was that's just pretty be like much a slide, straight drop. I mean, it would be a slide for maybe a little bit, but then you would just yeah. Um, one of the people we were with was telling me that her friend a few years ago was in that section, clipped onto the fixed line, and she was talking to this Lithuanian guy right there, which is totally normal. People pass, people are all climbing. She looked away for a second, turned back and he had slid down. Died. Jesus. Oh my God. And there's probably a, like a trench filled with just un like frozen dead bodies. There'd at the definitely bottom. Be, yeah. Like There'd a mass some... grave. Jesus Christ. People, That's people slide into crevasses all the time. I'm, and... You know, I'm fine. It's just, it's a it's a it's a genetic survival skill that I'm scared of heights. Kept probably my ancestors alive, but like, got passed down. All the ones who were scared of heights didn't die. So you know what? I, I'm fine with not going to Everest. When you were on the summit, you were unclipped from the fixed ropes, right? Uh, no, there's actually a rope right at the top that we clipped into. Okay. Like yeah. I, just if not, you weren't clipped onto that, you could like misstep on the summit too, and oh yeah, fall to, down, and right? die. Yeah, that's. Fun. And the winds were so strong; it was. 50 to 70 mile per hour winds so, yeah. to the point where your body is getting blown into the side of and the, you're exhausted and you're yeah and, yeah that's it's no joke insane. it was for some points where i got pretty nervous mm -hmm. how much climbing experience do you have before everest i uh starting in 2021 i went down to ecuador with my girlfriend at the time and we it was the only country that was letting americans in during uh the pandemic and we climbed cotopaxi and chimborazo which are both around twenty thousand feet mm -hmm. um and i caught the bug i was like this is awesome i was just in Antarctica a few months ago and did um, Mount Vincent, the tallest peak there. And then I met Nims in Qatar through some mutual friends. Um, and he's like, Cl climb Everest. So Now, uh, I got to ask you about Antarctica. Yeah, because you guys have done an episode on that, right? Yeah. It is a wild place. Now, do you think that there could be a civilization living underneath there? Yes. Like hollow? <laughs> yes. But, but, one, do you, do you think there's an ice wall? Yes. You've been there. You yeah. think there's an ice wall? I've seen it. You've seen the ice yeah, wall? Yeah. I've seen it. We we had a guy on who uh, crossed Antarctica and all the flat earthers like think that he's in on it. Like that <laughs> they just bought him out and yeah. they're like, he didn't actually cross. He found the ice wall, but he's being quiet because they made him a billionaire. Oh, yeah. That was uh, Qatar. Colin O'Grady? Yep. Yeah, Colin O'Grady. Oh, yeah. Colin O'Grady. Yeah. You yeah. know Colin O'Grady. So yeah, yeah. he's actually been on this podcast yeah. oh really yeah That's awesome yeah he, and they're like they're like yeah he's part of the conspiracy they bought him <laughs> I, out i know colin well at this point yeah. i i think he is i agree yeah. with him yeah. yeah yeah he's told he's told me this i won't i won't expose him but yeah, yeah i know yeah. what's going on <laughs> yeah so alien base underneath the ice i think so yeah i mean nazi base nazis could be nazis yeah hitler new schwabenland yeah they all escaped there yeah, I signed an NDA when I left, but there, there are some crazy things down there. Yeah, I would love to get down there, so we'll have to we'll have to start. I think, I think this season there's a very high chance that we'll go down. Okay, what what is the the mountain like down there? Um, super cold. It's like way lower. I think it's uh, sixteen thousand forty feet. I think so. Like, not that high, but uh, just super remote. Like Antarctica is a giant desert. Yeah, and just in the middle of nowhere, you go out, hike up. Um, Atmosphere is thinner, so you actually do get some altitude sickness. I got some bad headaches, but uh, just so cold, man. So cold. Jeez, I can't even imagine. I mean, I'm looking at your face. I can tell where your skin's like fried off yeah. and what like lasted <laughs> after getting like windburn. Because <laughs> you got to tan some places, but you're pale. Oh, you should. Here, let me show you this picture. You should have seen my face like right after I summited. You looked oh like. Oh my God. <laughs> you look like a raccoon, except for I, the raccoon I couldn't was white yeah. and red. <laughs> you had a look that like some of the. Sherpas who have just been climbing that mountain for years, like you kind of looked similar to them. Yeah. Like their skin just gets kind of like wind burnt and discolored, yeah. Frostbite a bit. But I think yeah, I had a oxygen mask on and obviously there's condensation from your breath and it froze to my face and I pulled oh it off God. for a second at the summit and it ripped skin off and I was like, fuck, I'm gonna have a couple Jesus. scars. Jesus. What was uh what was were you guys drinking? Um, so <laughs> yes, I, you, like, yeah, we, we stay drink. warm. <laughs> like, so we drank at base camp. Now I can't speak for Tyler, but I, I don't think people drink past base camp. Uh, if you watch 14 peaks, Nims take shots up at the summits. I mean, Nims is a, a special breed, but, yeah. uh, there, there was alcohol, uh, with other climbers up at camp two and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it'd be nice just to keep warm, yeah. I guess, in a sense. But also, it. it's kind of like a false sense of warmness. Yeah, then you're groggy in the morning. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but I think people do. I would yeah. definitely just keep something on me just in case, like, I'm about to go. 
just like have oh yeah if you your little flask it, 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 but it might that. also just like like get you going and get you yeah. to the last point yeah well I, we we talked about meth and speed that could have been good well like, vasco I think, constrictor no one yeah but if you know you're cold. gonna die anyway just for that last little summit push well you know what there's that finnish dude that ate like like oh it's the, the guy in the skis yeah. yeah he like he like took all the meth and he went all the <laughs> way he like didn't sleep for 10 days and he got home yeah he lost like a ton of weight that might all be... the way up mount everest oh no this was like in like world, a, war yeah, world war ii oh, okay, he took yeah. all the pervitin which was like yeah the that... finish were lo- like they the, it's, it's very unclear they don't really want you to know which side they were on <laughs> okay. if you like look back like you're trying to figure out like because the finish like also helped invade leningrad like with the nazis but then they also like fought the nazis and they don't it's very ambiguous and they also want to keep it ambiguous yeah. but i think there's something there like why did this guy have the nazi meth on him <laughs> like i bet there's a like differing switching sides just preserving his, whatever but he 10 days no sleep on skis like traveled hundreds of miles damn so i mean i guess if you had that much and you just turn into a like a, a winter like a zombie like a white walker knew you were gonna die at the top just wanted to get up there yeah maybe i'll try that next season <laughs> yeah no i think some climbers do use adderall or, or things but like i feel that. like it's, a, it's just a one way to frostbite because it, it literally restricts your uh actually donnie i yeah. didn't tell you this but D- donnie gave me an, uh, an adderall night oh yeah <laughs> I, did, did, I, I, I worst I've decision asked... i've ever made in my life when did you okay. take it uh, I think I had a few, so I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll test this on my first rotation. So I took it uh, at base camp as we were going through Kumbu. I, I hope Nims doesn't hear this, he'd kill me. And uh, I just felt like shit, like I, I threw up at camp two, I couldn't eat, so like I'm losing energy, oh it's not good. All right, that oh, is not got, my fault. He, was, like, was it, was he fault. demanded one. Is it, were you Adderall nauseous, where it was just like a stomach thing? Yeah, like the chemical? for sure. And like you're exerting so much energy and that mixed with having taken Adderall, it's like, Fuck. But did like the, 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 if you could stomach it, t- if you took it with like food and like plan, do you think it would have helped or? I think it just, maybe it affects me differently than other people, but it yeah. sucks. Yeah. I don't think you need it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> a lot of energy. <laughs> you, uh, did you get relaxed? <laughs> you took, no, that, that's like, that happens to a lot of people. They, they take Adderall for the first time and they realize, oh, I have ADHD. Like I'm like, I'm chilling. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's the first time I've felt normal my yeah, entire yeah. life. Like, wait, this is what normal people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you had done a lot of like high, um, endurance things in the past. Like you ran that 150 mile marathon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. So I think oh, that helps. That? W- sorry. W- where, where was that? That was in uh, the Sahara desert in Morocco. Oh fuck! Yeah, that was insane. 150 miles and like 100 plus degree temperatures. You know what's crazy? The first humans to get out of uh, Africa had to cross the Sahara. Well, long, long time ago, the Sahara wasn't the Sahara. It was, it that was, was probably when they get out. It was actually out. pretty green. Yeah, I gotta check out the timing on that. But that's insane. What was what, what was it like uh, crossing through there? Was it barren, or were were you running through? Vill- Did you run into any like like uh, nomadic peoples? You, you start, we, you kind of like fly or drive into this village. Uh, um, and then once you're in the desert, it's totally barren, nothing. Um, and it's either like kind of flat, rocky barrenness or super steep sand dunes that are like, um, the sand is as fine as talcum powder, like baby powder. Wow. It's insane. Did you accidentally inhale it? Uh, probably. Being I mean, so fine? Got in my shoes, got in, it was terrible. Huh. Any wildlife out there while you're uh, all running? birds but that was pretty much it i don't think anything could yeah. survive out there when we were on the trek up to base camp like we were told to always wear our buff which is just like the mm-hmm. thing that goes over your nose and mouth because there's so much dust in the valley it's very dry and that if you're just inhaling that for you know two days in a row you'll develop a cough which they call the kumbu cough yeah. and um a lot of people got that did you ever have a bad cough? Yeah, up until two days ago, I was hacking my lungs up. It was bad. Yeah, it w- was that from the cold or just from from, from the cold? Okay, I lost my voice. It was it's not good. PFT has just made his first appearance on extra dosing. <laughs> yes. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. So you climbed you climbed Everest? Yeah. Congrats. Thanks, man. Uh, one thing I've always wondered about Everest is if if the sun is hot 
right? Do you yeah. agree that the sun is hot? Yeah, I would say so. Then how come the closer you get to it, you get colder? <laughs> Ever think about that? Uh, I didn't until right now, but that's a, that's a good yeah. Question. Just think about yeah. that. I'm, I Shit. just want to leave you with that to just <laughs> marinate on, huh? Well, interesting. Where the UV you rays, do get very bad sunburns out the there. The UV that's true. rays, okay, it's true. But but does that make it's not you from the warmer? Heat. Oh my god, my my brain. No, so pretzel. UV rays don't warm you up. <laughs> but then, what are they cooking? What? Don't it, your cells die because the UV rays kill them? It's honestly the heat? dumbest question that I've ever asked in my life. And now Billy's like, <laughs> he he makes some really good points. <laughs> no, but think but think about what are the UV rays? What what do they do when they hit your cells? Uh, kill yeah, them. yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Your skin doesn't protect against UV rays. It has nothing to do with heat. I know, but what the hell does the UV rays do? Radiation. Destroy? Oh, it's killing. Okay, it's yeah. radiation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sunburns are same as like radiation burns. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's why. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's that's why they cause cancer because it's radiation causes cancer. Was it worse on Everest or in Antarctica? Uh, Everest for sure. Okay. Yeah. Even though it's thinner. Yeah. Just everything about Everest was way tougher. Damn. I mean, I, imagine being Antarctica and there's just, there's something badder out there. Everest. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another question. So I read, I read Into Thin Air. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like cold reading that book yeah. with all the descriptions of ice and all the different columns that they have. And they talk about making your way through uh, the ice fall yeah. at the start of it. Was that the scariest part? Yeah, I think like the first or second scariest because it's just you're maybe every 30 minutes you're crossing a crevasse and you look down and it's 500 plus feet of just abyss and you're on this little rickety ladder shaking for maybe like 20 plus feet and it's if you fall, you're dead. And actually a week before we got up to base camp, three Sherpas fell into one of the crevasses and Jeez. died. Oh man. And you know what's crazy? Yeah. We were talking about this earlier. They're basically mass graves because all the bodies freeze and there's they people usually fall at the same spots and just at the bottom there's mm -hmm. just like a trench full of people there are a lot mm -hmm. of bodies in crevasses yeah have you thought about doing um doing k2 yeah so i'm it's i'm gonna do it you're crazy that that <laughs> that one is actually insane like yeah. it, it's actually it's weird to think about because we we're talking about mount everest and you're like oh congratulations it's so cool that you climb mount everest it's awesome you hear like about people going making the trip to everest and everyone's like excited for them like this is gonna be great k2 is one of those ones where it's like it's still it's scary, I think, even for the most seasoned mountaineers, right? Yeah. Uh, we were talking, I don't know if you were there, I was talking to Tanya, uh, a climber we met up there. She had done K2 last season. She said she would never do it again, even for a million dollars. Like, there are certain points where there are little pieces of rocks flying down. They sound like bullets past your head. And if any of them make contact with you, you're going to lose like an eye or die. It's So respectfully, why are you doing K2? <laughs> I just... I love a challenge, and I also think that uh, my philosophy is the more you can, more things that are outside of your comfort zone that you bring into your comfort zone, the easier normal life gets. Like now, you know, going into an office, having a normal life is just a breeze. That, but is it boring now? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why want, that's why I want to do K2. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then after K2, what is there? Space. Uh, that's a good answer. Do you have any interest, yeah. just as someone who doesn't like heights, do you have any interest like jumping out of planes and doing dangerous like stunt type uh, activities? Like, uh, Actually, wingsuit activities? Yeah. Surprisingly, no, not at all. I, yeah. I've sky, skydived, skydived a few times and uh, it's terrifying when the door opens. I have a yeah. hard time jumping out. Because a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, this guy's got a death wish. But like you... I, I don't think so. It's more of an... It's a pure adventure. Yeah. Like I, I love the adventure aspect. The, the thought of jumping out of a plane or like base jumping that doesn't excite me that's kind of like an adrenaline junkie which i don't I, maybe i am a little bit but i think that's different from the idea of wanting to adventure like go you know hike climb mountains wow uh, so the real yeah. reason pfd probably came in here is he probably heard that you had sex on everest so let's get to that <laughs> well, part of the conversation. No, I, I, you mounted everest <laughs> I, I mounted everest <laughs> mounted on everest <laughs> Wait, did you actually bone on Everest? Yeah, at base camp. I thought, is it too Hell cold? Yeah. I thought there, you you could have gotten stuck. It, it was cold. It was. <laughs> no, you're. <laughs> like, it's I assume too. they were both in the sleeping bag. <laughs> It's well, pretty warm we don't have to get into specifics. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Really. I just like, wonder I mean, what the highest elevation that any human being has ever had sex in was. I, I think I know the answer to this. I won't say who it is, but uh, they told me they had sex um, on the South Coal, uh, which is Camp Four, which is almost thirty thousand feet. Holy now shit. near the summit that's camp four i wouldn't club. have sex because at some point he had to take his penis out and i just i wouldn't risk it that high it's up it's a like, very serious risk of frostbite on your dick yeah mm -hmm. yeah like you could probably you could probably get it within 
two minutes. Yeah, put something yeah. warm. But if you're the yeah, we gotta warm each other up. But if you're <laughs> if you're the kind of guy or gal that likes to get choked out, talk about like <laughs> uh, you have oxygen deprivation up there. It might yeah. be awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Was did, did the hypoxia impact any of the experience? Uh, I definitely was out of breath uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, what about what about the meals at the end of a really cold day when you're hiking? Is it is it stew based? Do you have a lot of soups? A lot of soups, yeah. So like from base camp to camp two, uh, we we had chefs and like proper cooking uh, setups. So we would have like normal meals like meat, uh, starches, etc. But then once you get to camp three and four, you're eating dehydrated meals or ramen. And the Sherpas thought it was a good idea to keep putting chicken feet, these like dehydrated chicken feet, in my uh, ramen. So it's at the end of a long day. All you want to do is eat something, anything that tastes good. And you look down and there's like a chicken foot with the nails in it, like mm -hmm. floating in the top of your ramen. You're like, fuck. There's a good chance that chicken foot came from America. We <laughs> export tons of chicken feet. I, I believe that. Back yeah. to Asia. Mm -hmm. Chicken feet aren't bad if they're prepared in the correct way. Yeah. Not, like, not never. It's like not yeah, what you yeah, want to eat there. <laughs> in Hong Kong, they make solid chicken feet. I would eat chicken feet in Hong Kong, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you know, so we met a girl, uh, Grace from Taiwan, and she had uh, already climbed K2 without using oxygen. Yes. And then I think she was going to try to climb Mount Everest without using oxygen. Do you have any idea if she was I actually don't. That's a, that's a good point. I have to follow up with uh, NIMS. I don't know. Yeah. Is there like the, the no oxygen, like no oxygen people? Do they look down on the oxygen people? Uh, they'll never say it explicitly, but for sure. They're like, they're like these fucking, pathetic yeah. losers. <laughs> Air breathers. Yeah, what? <laughs> Is there Ar any... Artificial. Because uh, I've, I've heard that Ooh. a lot of people make the argument that it might be safer to climb without oxygen because you don't have the you know the, the weight of the equipment yeah. and all the logistics of stopping to change your gear in and out. Is there any truth to that at all? Um, I'm not an expert, but like when you say that, it definitely sounds right because the oxygen canister that you're carrying with you is like 20 pounds, so that added weight. Uh, once you go on oxygen, you can't come off it. So if you're at a high altitude and like something goes wrong, which my mask actually did freeze up at one point, you're like, fuck, I'm going to die because then your body's used to more oxygen than it would get. Um, and yeah, so I think like if you can do it safely, it's probably safer in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Can you can you even describe the feeling that you had when you reached the peak of Everest, or was it a transcendental moment that's just like it's a feeling that you get that there are no words for? Uh, probably the latter. It's like it, you're so exhausted and you've just gone through so much that like doesn't f at least for me it didn't fully hit me in the moment. And then as you're coming down the mountain, you're, you're reflecting on it and you're kind of like that was incredible. But uh, it's it is there is like a little. Um, sense of euphoria when you get up there because mm -hmm. it's like holy shit i i did it i'm like at, on on top of the world tallest mountain we were lucky enough to be up there by ourselves like it was just our team usually there's a queue of people and to be on top of mount everest by yourself it was just me and my sherpa it's like surreal yeah is have you ever had a child uh, i i can't say yes for sure but i probably have kids running around somewhere in the world okay because <laughs> everyone's like <laughs> Everyone's like having a kid is this big experience. I was about to be like, what What was crazier, mounting Everest or, you know, having a child? If I was at the birth or like if I knew my child, yeah. I, <laughs> I think I have kids in Mongolia somewhere, honestly. Yeah. Mm. That rocks. I would, I would love to have Mongolian kids. Yeah. <laughs> did anybody, did anybody get up there and they're walking down and be like, you know, that, that was kind of overrated. <laughs> did, anybody, uh, did you meet anybody like that like no yeah, that was that good like no, no, you know? no, like, like pe people talk about everest and they're like oh it's so commercialized now everything's taken care of you rely on the sherpas it can't be that hard it's f i've done a lot of hard things in my life that was fucking hard yeah um maybe nims like i didn't hear nims explicitly say it but like i can imagine he just i think he's done it eight times now he probably walks down he's like oh just another walk in the park mm -hmm. nims done it eight times yeah that's crazy. But actually, I, the record is 27. A guy yeah. just summited for his 27th time this year. Wow. Because I kind of thought that some of the Sherpas would have done it like 27 times. Type. Yeah, one has. Uh, a lot of them are in the 10s, like 10 to 20. Huh, that's a lot. Le but that actually goes to show how dangerous Everest really is. Because it's, I, I kind of thought that these guys were just going up and down like multiple times. It's dangerous, but it's also the weather window. Like they're only in, in an entire year. They're only maybe like 
uh, a few days where you can actually get to the top. So if you think about it that way, like maybe you could sum it once or twice a year. And if you sum it 20 times, that's like 10 years uh, minimum. So how many time? how much time are you, are people like staying at different base camps? Um, really only one night. Like mm-hmm. uh, some people stay camp two for a few nights, but um, you, you want to keep moving. And once you're at camp three and camp four, especially camp four, you can't spend much time up there. Mm-hmm. Like the, the more time you spend in the, the death zone, which is camp four and above, uh, the worst. So like my friend Jacob spent 63 hours up there and that's like bad because your body is actively dying every, every minute you spend up there. Wow. Well, we, we checked that study hypoxia people live longer. So, True. I mean, if you're closer to the sun, I don't know. Get a sick tan. Yeah. yeah. Sick tan though. So when you're, when you're training, you guys might've already talked about this. I don't know, but when you're, when you're training to climb Mount Everest, are you doing a lot of cardio work? Are you doing strength training or is it all just like functional mountaineering stuff? Uh, I didn't really train physically because, uh, one, I just, I'm always, I, I try to keep a good baseline of like physical, uh, health, but, um, I think a lot of it is the technical kind of like gear equipment training stuff that matters the most. And like you could go in the Stairmaster, you can get super in shape, but the amount of time you're sitting at base camp, um, it kind of just, uh, voids it all. Like you lose, mm-hmm. you'll lose it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just doing the Stairmaster. Do you think it helped? <laughs> I mean, cause, cause for the Maybe, trek yeah. to base camp. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, yeah. I've climbed uh old rag mountain in the Appalachians yeah. and uh, you know, those used to be the tallest mountains in the world. <laughs> so who's to say who's the real mountaineer here? Like you're just, you're lucky that you were born into this window. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, but born too late to climb old rag. Born too late. <laughs> what was the average height? So I have this theory that usually when I'm hung over in altitude, I say that altitude affects tall people more. Yeah. Would you, what was the average height of the mountaineers? Um, because probably five foot 10, five foot 11. A lot, yeah. of, like, a lot of tall, skinny European people going mm-hmm. up. Uh, Billy, how many times have you been hung over at altitude? <laughs> <laughs> and what does at altitude mean? I think that's what, like, when you say Vermont? you're in altitude, you're not in altitude, you're at altitude. Yeah, I know, but how yeah. many, like, is this a, a frequent thing for you where you've, no, everyone just altitude everyone so just like don't drink that heavily when you're at altitude. Are you, you more are you talking up. about Colorado? Or? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Were you yeah. like is it <laughs> just in the state of Colorado? Is it, yeah. Vegas, yeah. is it Vegas at altitude? I think a little bit. I mean, yeah. At altitude. Well, yeah. Like, everything's at altitude compared to we're, New we're York. We're at altitude right here. Yeah. In this is building, we're altitude. higher than the street. Well, no, we're at sea level. But yeah, but we're in but the building. Yeah, but now we're, we're like at least yeah. 100 feet high. Is the uh, the bar that Donnie sent back the video of with all the all the Guinness donkeys? Now, actually, Donnie, I, I showed that video to my my aunt, who is a real big donkey fan and a mule fan, and she absolutely loved it. But she said, "Go back and you tell your friend Donnie those are not donkeys; those are mules." Yeah, they, they, they were mules. Yeah. They were Guinness so, mules. Yeah. Damn it! Do you th- is that the highest bar in the world, or I'm, could you open up a bar? higher up on Everest and people just get drunk way faster. There, there should be a bar at the summit. I don't know why they haven't done that. I mean, they <laughs> officially they officially call themselves the highest Irish pub in the world. Um, but if you're talking about Irish bars in the world, like we had a bar at our base camp that That's had, that had that is t- true. tall boys and rum. And uh, the one day we got pretty drunk was Puja Day, which is like a ceremony they do to bless the mountain. And then it's the one day all of the Sherpas have off. So then they just rage for the next like 12 hours. We, was, we were, we a were lot shirtless of for a bit. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, off. I probably only, I had probably like five beers, three shots of rum. And I was very concerned because I was like, <laughs> this hangover is just going to like, the like, yeah. I might have to be helicoptered out of here <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. But I don't know. The, the hangover wasn't horrible. And I think it's just because I was drinking so much more water than I like I usually do. What would, what brands of alcohol can you get up there? Uh, they had a, a popular rum brand. So we pretty much just had rum and then Gurkha beers. G- yeah, yeah, yeah Gurkha maybe. beers. Are those like a lager, Pilsner? Like what, yeah, what would you compare it, was, it to? It's a beer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Tastes like beer. <laughs> Tastes like beer. Yeah. It was good. Did you have a beer once you got back to base camp after uh, summoning? No, although after summoning, we went straight to Kathmandu after like an hour at base camp, and Nim's um, 
the 52nd best club in the world is in Kathmandu. It's called yes. Lord of the Drinks. Oh, yes. And Nims is like, I'm bringing you all out. Let's celebrate. And he got us a table in this VIP section and with an obnoxious amount of alcohol. And that was the most I've drank in like years. The 52nd best club. Yeah. That's awesome. I usually only go to the top 50, but that was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what the top 50 looks like. What's number one? Best club in the world? Number yeah. Number one. It's probably. Ooh. Opium in Barcelona. Don't they? I, I've heard that one's pretty that one's insane. insane. Holy shit! I almost yeah. died there. Yeah, 11. I heard their bouncers are insane. Yeah, I literally almost got stabbed there. I didn't do anything. It's a little story for another time. <laughs> yeah, I, I I've heard some insane stories about the bouncers at Opium, but that that club is out of control. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, wait. Probably Hell's Angels. It's a pretty crazy club. Ooh, where? where? Just the the, the oh, club itself. Oh, the biking. The biker club. <laughs> yeah, the biker club. The number one club is in Ibiza. Uh, I Ibiza. Sense. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Cavoli Club Dubai. I'll have to. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Hit that one up. Um, while you're here, would you mind talking some Mars as well? Yeah, we could talk Mars. Seeing, so Tyler works for SpaceX. Um, oh, what? Dude, and, that's insane. <laughs> and you were telling me so, like, I I never really knew Elon's plan to get to Mars, but the way you laid it out for me, I'm like, oh, this could actually happen. Oh yeah, it'll definitely happen if if everything goes according to plan, which at yeah. least to some extent, yeah, well, it'll it'll happen. Yeah. So if those rockets that they're testing now, yeah, Starship. If, yeah. So if we get the Starships to work, how would the whole process of traveling to Mars work? Yeah. So actually, uh, Donnie and I were in Lobuche, this little town on, on our way to base camp, and we live streamed the first official launch of uh, the full stack Starship. It blew up before it separated, but was that on purpose? Not on purpose, but that was like if it had separated successfully, that would have been icing on the cake. We mainly wanted to test the infrastructure of the launch pad, which held up. Everything was good, so it was a successful test. Um, but yeah, if those, if we get those up and running, which we will hopefully uh, by the end of this year, maybe next year, um, that's what will take humans to Mars, and we can establish our first like permanent settlement, permanent colony there. Um, It'll take six months, about six months to get there. Uh, and then you'll have to wait at least a year until you can come back. Um, okay. Because of the just the kind of orbit of Mars and Earth and having to have enough fuel to get back so that to be within close distance of one another. So what is your role at SpaceX? Um, I actually work within the Starlink um, program, so satellite internet. We're, oh, nice. Like, I think Elon had this vision where uh, building Starship is super expensive, all the research and development that goes into it. Um, we need to fund that somehow because like the amount of money that the governments and whoever else will pay us to launch satellites is caps out at like maybe $4 billion a year. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, Starlink could theoretically bring in like $50 billion a year. People in like 45% of the world doesn't have access to internet. We have rockets. We could launch these satellites up easily and we have really good engineers. So let's do that. And uh, um, working on the products and... How, how do we apply these to like cruise ships and commercial airlines? And So can you buy Starlink right now? I know Ukraine has it. Yeah. So like, could I possibly start living out of a trailer and driving around the U.S. and have Starlink and like podcast remotely and just like live on the road? This, this sounds like his future. <laughs> yeah. No, this is something I've How much thinking. would that run you? Uh, so yeah. we have a product called, it was, it was initially called RV, but it's called Rome now. Yeah. It, it's you can either get a dish with a mass that you just take out of your RV and, and put down on the ground at Orient, or a flat one that you just bolt on the top of your RV. You can drive anywhere, use it anywhere. Um, I think that's like a hundred fifty dollars a month, somewhere around there. How and much? It's, it's, how, how much is the uh, uh, equipment? The equipment. Yeah. If you get the one with the mast, that's five hundred US dollars. If you get the flat one, it's uh, two thousand five hundred. Oh. But it's a one-time purchase, and then it's like less than two hundred dollars a month, and it's living room quality internet anywhere you go. So uh, you could you could like you could live stream podcast. 4K yeah yeah ooh sounds like we're, sounds like get, we're moving into an RV it sounds you, like I'm getting on the road yeah if you get the glo the global package which is two hundred dollars a month you can go anywhere in the world with it holy shit yeah. that's amazing um did you ever ask Elon if you'd follow me on Twitter uh no I haven't seen him since you uh, haven't seen that since then <laughs> so that was when I was in club 999 and my account was locked down right yeah and I was trying to get Elon to be my millionth follower oh I forgot to, about that to, yeah. to unlock it yeah 
I, I keep ch- I check every day to see if he's followed me. Still hasn't he's, done it yet. I'm based out of LA. He's always down in Texas, but I, I promise you, next time I see him, I will ask. Okay, appreciate. That. Oh, yeah. do, you, do you? He's your boss. He's uh-huh. like my boss's boss. His boss, but yeah. I mean, he's still super involved in everything we oh, do, nice. and like, uh, yeah. Kind of like how Portnoy is our boss, but we don't really see him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I was just shocked to know that the plan is to be able to take a two year round trip to Mars. Cause I thought it was almost like it was just going to be a one way and I, you I would just the initial, be on Mars for the rest of your life. The initial, yeah. uh, people who go over, will probably stay there for a long, long time. Are yeah. You, to like set up the base, but yeah. then like eventually down the line, you could do a two year round trip. Yeah. Cause I like, I, I might consider a, a, a two year round trip to Mars. Are you trying to go to Mars? Do you, would you want to go? Yeah, I would. And like my uh, my boss now, he's been at SpaceX for 15 years and uh, he's uh, seen it all. But he texted me after I summited Everest. He's like, now now we know anything's possible. He's like, you know what this means? Like next next stop space. So I think wow, there's a non-zero chance to go. If you don't, I mean, we all, if you don't mind me asking, you know, the Roanoke colony, a lot of early, like, yeah. doesn't... <laughs> Does doesn't go well. Yeah, so, no. It's uh They I, found I, out what what happened to that colony. Yeah. Yeah. We need to do an episode on that. Wasn't there like cannibalism or something? Because well, they couldn't feed themselves. Yeah, yeah. No, but I think they ended up just um living with a yeah, the ones who survived. A local tribe and then just because they, they did a DNA test of that tribe and like found some European genes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they just you do that with aliens on Mars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cross pollinate with them. Yeah. yeah. The aliens will take care of you once you get I just there. always yeah. thought there was a monster named Croton that just took over. <laughs> yeah. And so like <laughs> on the on their way out, they were just like, no, Croton. And they carved yeah. that into a tree before Croton <laughs> ate them. Yeah, but was that, that was the just, name of the tribe? Yeah, that was the name of the tribe. So I don't know why it took like a, a thousand or I don't know, it took like <laughs> four hundred years to figure <laughs> out. Literally they literally the just note. wrote the name of the tribe they went to live with. <laughs> they went to live with Croton. <laughs> Like, oh, wow. <laughs> what happened? It was UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> Werewolves. But yeah, I mean, so you said, well, if you think you might have offspring running around the world, like, that's a great way to get away from them. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's a great yeah. way to avoid child support. If, if any of them reach out to me, I'm hopping right on the next rocket. <laughs> I'm right off to Mars. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, I can't hear you over the thrust. W- w- I mean, what do you think? Do you have any idea what living on, like their renderings of living on Mars would be like? Yeah, I mean, Elon's ultimate plan would be to terraform Mars, which I think uh, would involve like nuclear explosions at the poles. And yeah. then you could transform Mars into a planet like this with an atmosphere and you wouldn't have to live in pods. But for the first settlements, you would definitely have to live in um, kind of enclosed uh buildings wait 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 wait, wait. kind of like base camp i like so the the idea the the idea for colonizing mars is we're going to send people up there have them live in pods at first and then their mission out of these pods go to the poles and and detonate (laughs) nuclear weapons well look and and that's going to make it (laughs) that's so fucking metal yeah that's pretty metal but like yeah this (laughs) this is this is why i personally like elon musk more than Bill Gates, because there's two philosophies. Elon Musk wants to expand. You know, he's in, really into population growth. I mean, even in his personal life. And <laughs> someone like Bill Gates is like talking about population control because we only have one planet. Whereas Musk is like, fuck that. Let's try to make a new planet and like expand. And I'm more down with Musk's vision because like it's like more pro-human. Yeah, I think like you need larger population to do more things and like a lot of people blame climate change and all these problems we have on overpopulation, but we can also increase and uh, better our technology to accommodate the like larger population. So I totally agree yeah. with them. But I'm also worried about how robots are soon going to take a lot of people's jobs. So like what are, I there's think a lot of people that just like there's won't have be, work to do. There's going to be a good, it's there's going to be, you know, friction, but there's going to be a point where the population collapse that's being predicted is going to align like we have the AI, but we're like, once that collapses, then we'll just let the robots pick up the slack type thing. Okay. Next 20 years are going to be insane. I mean, that's we're living in the most interesting time in history. Yeah. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Hopefully we don't. I mean, except for up. the only other time would, would be like when we were first discovering the new world, like when yeah, we just had no cool. idea, like North and South yeah. America existed. 
Um, Actually, I think colonizing Mars is super similar to like Europeans first coming to uh, yeah. the Americas. And this yeah. time, so hopefully there's nothing there. Yeah, that would be, be that could be cool. Could be cool, but then we'll have to deal with, you know. We've had a lot of rovers <laughs> on Mars, though, and they haven't really found much yet. Yeah. yeah we well, always see a hand come up and block the camera. What if they're they... underneath the ground? Yeah. What if they're like... We, we were discussing our, one of our last episodes was on hollow earth mm. and we, in, in you know we came to the conclusion that like i don't think the earth's hollow like an egg or like like a balloon but i think they're like when you think of a, a bowling ball our oceans are only less than a, a, the thickness of a droplet on a bowling ball yeah when you think of how big how much of the earth we haven't explored like what we've only explored 35 percent of the ocean 10 percent really but 35 scanned and then that's only less than a droplet if you had the ocean on top of a bowling ball. And like Mount Everest is half of a, a grain of salt on a bowling ball compared to the rest of the earth. It is possible. There could be like small caverns where civilizations exist underground that just avoided extinction events and become so much more advanced than us and like are driving the UFOs that are going in, like being shown to Congress. I mean, there's still tribes in the Amazon and uh, like Papua New Guinea that were that are totally... Um, not in contact with civilization and yeah. what about like you, you go down to the bottom of i think it was called the java trench and we're still discovering new species like yeah. there's so many places the marianas trench or yeah something. well there's yeah. there's mariana trench but i just saw a video today uh it's like somewhere near java like okay, in the yeah. pacific and there's a, this new species like we're it, it's pretty wild yeah so i mean think about how big mars is there could be like civilization under the ground in mars that's just safe from all the adapted mm. to their uh atmosphere the gases the combination of gases that they have there and just underneath the the ground there and avoiding all like the meteorites and stuff yeah i mean do you guys know why like coffee is called java because the island of java yeah but it was because coffee beans and plants used to only be cultivated in the middle east and then i think some dutch people snuck some beans out of I don't know, maybe Ethiopia or maybe Saudi Arabia, but they snuck the beans out, and then the Dutch had control of most of Indonesia at that yeah. at that time, and they found that like Java was also perfect for cultivating coffee, so they just uh -huh. they, they they turned it into a huge coffee island. Well, that is dope. Yeah. What happens if we find something on Mars, and we bring it back to Earth? And we well, can, I, like, yeah, I mean. What would be? Do a, they plan to like harvest any resources from Mars? Not for Earth, like it would okay. just be for Mars because yeah. it would just be too expensive yeah. to get them back. Yeah, true. But then once we build the infrastructure, yeah, then we can start trade with inter interplanetary yeah. trade. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking. <laughs> that would be, now, yeah. yeah. Now that's intense. I mean, the Hollow Earth theory. I think they they found the largest cave system in the world only like twenty years ago or something. Where so, was that again? Uh in China. I believe that, or, or maybe Vietnam. Let's see, what's the largest cave system in the world? Because I was shocked when they were like, oh, it was only found not that long ago. You know what's pretty crazy? The exact, there's a, another conspiracy theory that uh, there's a, you know, a bunch of Bigfoots living in the national parks because, and they live in the caves underneath the national parks. Because mm. if you look at a map of where all the large cave systems are in America, it overlaps completely with our national parks and mm. like Teddy Roosevelt like found out about the Bigfoot and he Try like to hide them by they, yeah. they, they went to war with them and he was like <laughs> okay we'll make a truce we'll let you have all this land but could like, be yeah that's why so many people go missing in national parks every year uh, that's uh Bigfoot's crab them that's a far out one but it's kind of funny yeah I just, just love the idea of like Teddy Roosevelt in like an action <laughs> movie against these like Bigfoot trying to watches. fight them I would watch that that I would 100% watch that that's a I came up with another movie script last one was Tiki Torches and Touchdowns this one Teddy Roosevelt fighting the big feet uh, where at it would be definitely uh, uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone and they live in the volcano oh, oh okay. that'd be cool yeah I'd and their like large cave system like they know how to make energy and heat from the volcano all right. And there's really cool like hot spring spas that they invite Teddy Roosevelt in and that's where they negotiate <laughs> their peace deal. It's okay. in like a bathhouse in the in the volcano. I could see them like using the hot springs cuz that's what the 
snow monkeys in Nagano, yeah. Japan do. I think they're the only the only animal like outside of humans that like use hot baths. Yeah. Mm. Well, some of those therapeutically. Ones in, some of those ones in Yellowstone, if you fall in, you die. Oh yeah. Yeah, those yeah. ones and, and and that actually has happened a few times. Yeah. It sounds terrifying. Some just, people just like a tourist skin off your yeah. bones. Yeah. yeah. Some idiot fucking grabbed a bison calf in Yellowstone and they had to put it down just cuz this dude like went pet it. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, but I love the videos of tourists getting clo too close to the bisons and the bisons just fucking them up. <laughs> I just, I, I have a sick like they try to take selfies with them and then the bison just like rodeo flips them. <laughs> I just, I get a sick satisfaction for watching those videos. Yeah, it's like the bullfighting like, videos yeah, where the yeah. matadors get like launched <laughs> get lo yeah. or like yeah. Well, um, all of the yaks on Everest were uh, very friendly. I think, dude, yaks are yaks are pretty chill. Yaks are very chill. And that's how, like, um, you know, base camp, it's like you have all of these domes and all these little kind of makeshift buildings up there. And, like, every single thing used to build those is carried up by either Sherpas, yaks, or mules. You know what's crazy about uh, yeah, uh, highland cattle? I might be wrong on this. Highland cattle are closer to yaks than other cattle. Okay. Or they have a little bit of they're not they're closer but they have yak dna but they still can interbreed with other types of cattle all right i nice. may be totally wrong on that but that's so crazy that like I buy it. yeah the yaks in the himalayas like in the in scotland are more related than all the yeah. beef in between but, yeah by the way donnie on that note about uh people carrying things up did you see the guy with the washing machine on his back no. You didn't what? see that? It's I don't some think of these so. Sherpas like will carry for days on end like the most ridiculous things on their backs. Like doors and like hundred pounds of whatever. Yeah, we saw a guy with just a full set of patio furniture yeah. on his back. <laughs> like I'm, like a table, all the chairs. I'd love to see some of these guys maxes if you put them like in like, a squat rack. Oh yeah. On a squat Olympic rack. Olympic level. Yeah. And they're wild. There should be like know. a Sherpa Olympics. There cool. should be because I mean we checked and Nepal has never won an Olympic medal, unfortunately. Really? Yeah, but oh. it's like their people are so athletic. You think they're, but there I guess there's no like climbing events. Yeah, it's true. Maybe in the X Games. I don't know. We should have mountaineering to the Olympics. Yeah. Um. Oh, there was a mountaineering in Nickelodeon guts. Did, uh, did, did you used to watch that? Yeah. Yep. Where they had to climb the aggro crag yes, at the end? Yep. They, you, you would be great at that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Adult guts. Okay. I totally lied. That's an urban legend about yaks and ca in a Highland cattle. Oh, yeah. Guess, yaks are cool closer fact. to oxen, whereas Highland cattle are still bovine. Hmm. So one of the guys we climbed with, he, he became the first Native American to summit Everest. Hmm. And I tried asking him about a conspiracy theory. I've heard a bunch. I've heard that Native Americans are just born without a fear of heights. And so they were used to build yeah. a lot of the skyscrapers in New York and Chicago. Like I've, I've heard that a few times, yeah. but I cannot confirm no, if no, that's no, true no. at all. I th it was like the, the, I think it's the Mohicans. No, no. The last of the Mohicans. Anyway, but like a certain tribe that like lived that had crossed, uh, you know, the Rockies had no fear of heights because all the ones that were able to cross didn't fear heights. Mm. Something like that. Yeah. What did Jake, what did Jacob say when you asked him about that? Um, he said he had not heard that before. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So they say that Native Americans from the Mohawk Mohawks. tribe have no fear of heights. Yeah, I don't... Oh, and then why are Mohawks not afraid of heights? Uh, but this is from a website poker eagles so i don't know if we can <laughs> if we can trust it yeah it sounds repre repre so from my it's an urban legend and the reason that they took it was because no one wanted to work those jobs except them mm. okay yeah so yeah good tagline though i mean if i was a mohawk i'd be like not scared of heights well maybe they just yeah, like but... slowly had to adapt then yeah <laughs> i think you can train yourself not to be afraid of heights exposure therapy i don't know I've gone yeah. up in a plane to skydive many times and it never gets better. Yeah. I mean, the trek up to base camp, there was only like one part where you're walking on a ledge and there's like a steep drop off. How did you feel? I, yeah, I, I was fine. Hmm. 
I can handle heights. I although I went to the Cliffs of Moher in Ireland, and there's no railing or anything. Yeah, that's on. pretty sketchy. It's Over. just this little pathway along the cliff, and I don't know. That's it's usually just, windy. Yeah, like you could easily be trying to take a photo and and accidentally fall off. Hmm. Um. All right. Well, hopefully next stop Antarctica. I think so. I would yeah. say there's a high probability we wind up yeah. there this year. Back in Antarctica. Um. Was yeah. that? Was that? Did that have as many deaths? From what you heard? No, I don't think anyone's ever died climbing Mount Vincent. Huh. Because first of all, not that many people have climbed it uh, or tried. And also it's just so well organized. It's not that high. Did you have to get your uh, appendix removed? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I read somewhere that if you were, if you go to Antarctica, you have to have your appendix removed. But I think it was if you were to stay over winter at one of the bases down there, you have to get your appendix removed. What's the U.S. base down there that there's a lot of conspiracy theories about? It's like a, I know McMurdo. Yeah. McMurdo? Yeah, I had never heard of it, but I guess there's a, like, a lot of conspiracies about that. The funniest thing is that all the crimes, the crimes in Antarctica are some of the funniest things. There's been murders in Antarctica. Really? really? Yeah, wow. one of them, I, let me look it up specifically, but one of them was over a chess match. <laughs> By two Russians in the middle of winter, and one of them, they like got to an argument over chess. I, I will say, like uh, Antarctic Logistics and Expeditions, Ailey, they basically are kind of the governing body of Antarctica. There's no one else down there, so they were telling me all these stories about the bases down at the South Pole. Uh, and during the winter, people go crazy; like they'll shave their heads. Like I could totally see how people murder each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah so some, these are some of the. Yeah, so there was a murder. It, it was two Russians, and and then there was another one between two workers in the kitchen at McMurdo, and they like they had a fight. <laughs> Both victims required stitches. One attacked one with a hammer, and they God. they like got this fight, and then they had to report it. And the guys made up, but by the time the FBI got there and flew one of the guys out to Honolulu to uh, try him. But that by the time they got there, they were both like boys. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, fuck, like, why did we get into that fight? Now I'm getting arrested. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't have the police get involved here. Yeah. I think yeah. most fights just need a little time. In 1959 at Volstock station, Oh, they don't. Some sources say it was a murder. Others say that the attack was not fatal. It was with an ice axe. After the, the game of chess, there was the killing was done with an ice axe. Holy shit! Yeah. <clears throat> Afterwards, chess games were banned at Soviet Russian Antarctic <laughs> Station. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, let's play some chess. Not allowed. Why? Ice axe. Yeah. One of the things I was sass about is I never got to use use an ice axe when I was when I was up there. Did you have to? climb some ice walls i know you were walking over a lot of ladders when, yeah. when going through the kumbu ice fall was there at 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 like any point was there an ice wall that you actually had to pick your way up uh no like the the worst uh wall which was probably load safe face you could just use your crampons in your center and get by with that so okay. like i could have taken my ice axe and used that at certain points uh but wasn't necessary so i'm a little upset about that too yeah have you ever done any ice climbing no, like I, I would love to though. Yeah, it looks fun. I mean, I'm not trying to do like a 100 foot face, but yeah. uh, that's what. Which be cool to swing the, a nice yeah. axe into. Um, who was the alpinist based on? Uh, uh, I, mean, I, f it, I forget his name. It but was a real. Yeah, guy. but no, I'm saying yeah, it was it was about. I like, remember who was it about. I, I forget what his name but, is. He's from Vancouver. And that like the majority of his climbing, he would he would do with ice picks. Yeah, yeah he was super nice climbing. Are okay. you into that? No, no, no. no. Yes. Hmm. Do you yeah. want to hear another funny Antarctic crime? Sure. One guy was giving away the endings of books in the <laughs> library, <laughs> and the other guy stabbed him. But there's other reports that uh, one Russian guy told another Russian guy that he should dance on top of the table to make money. Yeah. So uh, this, this, this is hilarious. Crazy down they, there. There's a winter over syndrome. Did you hear about that? Yeah, because it's dark 24-7 for months. So they go nuts over stupid shit. Lose your mind. Yeah. I feel like now we have the technology to just like invent a room that mimics sunlight and you yeah. could even have like, um, like each wall could be a screen so you could make it seem like you're at the beach. Maybe put like a hot tub in there. Yeah. That's a good point. And could then, do that. Yeah. It would definitely improve moods. Like they should have those up in Alaska. 
just like uh if you want to rent our sunroom for the day you can go in and there's just like a pool a fake beach hmm. and then whatever uv rays up top there are lights i think they're called happy lights that like give you yeah. uv and, and yeah uh, if you live in places like seattle um but th those guys were telling me like you'll drop off like seemingly normal scientists at the south pole yeah. before winter come back they, they all have shaved heads they've all gone nuts like after uh the season so oh man it's no joke i mean vitamin d deficiency yeah can't go outside it's like too cold so you're just in a little room for months do they have internet they do now with starlink sweet yeah let's go you, you might be solving antarctic crime yeah by true. just like yeah. providing them better <laughs> Yeah, this Starlink just, thing. I mean, I might just stop paying rent and put a caravan in the back of my truck. And then a lot of Starlink. people have done that with Starlink. I mean, like Sprinter vans, RVs. Yeah, I'm. I'm I might be zooming in. I could. <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted to at least try living in an RV for like a week, but I've never had the chance. You literally. I mean, the greatest part about it is you can seasonally travel everywhere. Yeah. Like you can be in the Northeast for the summer, you know, Florida, mm -hmm. South, like, let's say you want to go to the Southwest. Yeah. Or if you're the, uh, Emir of Qatar, he put Starlinks into his yacht. And so now he can just, he can, he can take his yacht wherever and have solid Wi-Fi. Wow. You have a maritime product so you could have your boat fully equipped with internet. A lot of fishing boats have them now. It's crazy. That's all. Do you, I mean, with remote work and Starlink, I mean, that's going to be amazing for the housing market. Because think about it, like, you know, the, the commute, you don't have to commute as much and people just like take up, like you could have a fully operating office in like the middle of Montana with Starlink. We've literally, yeah, we've heard that like people yeah. who can work remote, work can find cities because like the internet's better there with fiber. Yeah. People are now moving like rural Montana, Utah, just using Starlink and working no problem. Wow. Nice. I'm going to go buy a plot of land somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, with sea level rise i feel like having a boat with starlink that would be the move because then you you don't have to worry about floods you have a an ark boat. in the backyard waiting yeah <laughs> <laughs> internet on my ark <laughs> let's start building an ark boys elon's ark <laughs> elon's ark <laughs> elon's building an ark <laughs> is that what they're going to call the first ship that goes to mars the ark i mean that would be that's That'd a good be idea you should uh cool. pitch that yeah yeah Can the ark yeah that would be if they like um, set up a greenhouse up there, would like would they potentially be able to grow plants on Mars? Yeah, I mean we, yeah. we we'll have to. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. Are there any renderings of the living quarters for like you got to have a team working on like uh, what what would the Mars station look like? We we do have some rendering. Let's let's see. Oh hell find yeah! Them. Are uh, they are they sh are we able to share there... them or is it top secret? I'm gonna Google it. So if it's on the. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because, like, would you? I feel like they would design it kind of like they designed the Antarctic ones. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So, like, that's where the ships would launch from. That's you could see, like, a little building. Yeah. I mean, I, I this bet is it's like, all it, going to be functional. Wow. Yeah. It's all going to be functional architecture. But, like, yeah. what if you're designing the interior of the station and you're like, like, let's, let's, like, like, <laughs> what's Martian architecture going to look like? I don't like? know. That's Probably similar to the domes we were living in up at base camp. Yeah, honestly. I kind of got yeah. moon vibes yeah. from base camp, except you, you could walk outside. What were those? Like, there, there's domes? Like uh, there's yeah. There's domes. Like, yeah. Uh, and, like, I, I slept in a normal tent, but he actually slept, he had his own private dome. Nice. Like a little mini dome. You got That's dome, too? Sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can find a picture. Um, The domes were nice. Yeah, so and then like, we had a large dome oh that's, that's really cool it's it's actually the the movie the martian kind of do you think they're gonna get it right oh maybe because i feel like that's what it would look like yeah yeah it'll be close they got the aesthetic right mm -hmm. i think so so you w do you what do you think the odds would be of you dying on mars <laughs> no i mean actually i meant what i say is like dying on mars like at the end of your life uh, like, like like literally i'm saying like <laughs> Going to Mars, like me living a life, like a, yeah, living uh, your life and dying on Mars at like eighty. That's what I'm saying. I probably want to come back. You it's like inhospitable. Yeah, it'll, it won't be that fun. So, but you could be the king of Mars. Yeah, and you're I think Elon will be the king. Think of about Mars. how pissed <laughs> your kids would be. Yeah, that's true. If you just like left your family, like no, I don't want to be with you guys at the end of my <laughs> life. I'd, I'd rather be on Mars. I'd rather die in a barren rock. Yeah. Well, what if they get it going? Get like 
get it cooking there. If they get it cooking, then I'll for sure stay. Yeah. yeah. Like, what if they get it cooking to the point of base camp on Everest might be a little too much? What about like an Antarctic like station? Uh, I don't know. I was down there for a month, and that was a lot. That was did, one month. Did you get a little stir crazy? Yeah. Yeah. So, what was more comfortable, Everest base camp or your Mars accommodations? Uh, like like uh, Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah. An- oh Antar- yeah, yeah. Antarctica for sure. Because <laughs> like Antarctica had, uh, it's actually like Ailey's camps are like Union Glacier. There's another one that actually Elon built called uh, Three Glaciers Retreat, Three GR. Uh, they're actually like super well built. You have showers with hot water, um, super nice rooms. I don't know. Yeah, Antarctica was way better. How many times did you watch the thing? while you're there the thing is that a movie yeah yeah i've never seen it oh it's about uh it's a horror movie based in antarctica oh sh- i'll watch that it's, it's very good it's very good it's a classic it came out a while ago but movie. they did do a remake i don't think it's as good um 1982 yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. watch that it's a classic did you see anything weird in antarctica that you can't explain i can't talk about it but yeah really yeah you can't talk about it? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Donnie's coming down with me this season. You can ask him after he comes back, and he'll, yeah, I'm sure yeah, he'll yeah. say the same thing. NDAs yeah. are strong. I will. I'm, well, I'm going to be vlogging, though, too. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be random cuts where it's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm easily gullible. Did you actually sign an NDA? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> can't talk about it. Damn. I hate NDAs. Me, too. They Otherwise, don't... I'd have so much to say right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about all the cool shit. <laughs> I'll just say Colin O'Brady is definitely in on it. <laughs> well, did anybody watch Succession? <laughs> <laughs> Usually on Extra Doses, we, we started doing these for uh, Last of Us. They've just sort of evolved into a hodgepodge of whatever we want to talk about. It's either Succession or you climbed about out of risk. There's not really a huge in between. <laughs> some overlap there yeah i mean i have seen the the most recent episode the penultimate yeah yeah i just thought it was hilarious the my favorite part was when all the the girlfriends and wives met each other and were just chilling together mm-hmm. yes and they're like this is gonna piss him off mm-hmm. <laughs> have you ever Spoiler seen the alert. show or no no okay we don't have yeah. to talk about it i don't know yeah. get well, get mad dog and mckenzie involved um <laughs> this was way more interesting than what I could have ever talked about with Succession. I don't watch it either, so yeah. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this I would have rather listen to this than me talking about who I think is going to take over a fake company. But we will be back next week to talk <laughs> yeah. about that, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, for sure. I, I do want to give Donnie a quick shout out. I wouldn't have summited without him. <laughs> um, I ran out of Zinn early on in my trip, and <laughs> he had a few extra uh, things of it, and you know, was kind enough to share some. So yeah, I wouldn't have summited without out Zin and without Donnie, I wouldn't have had it. So did the Zin make you colder? I think it does. I, I don't feel a difference. I'm just addicted. So yeah, because you were hearing like you used to not do tobacco or nicotine at all, but then you like heard someone talk and he was talking about the benefits. Yeah, of actually, it, I, I, I forget what the science behind it is, but like people will smoke cigarettes at altitude um, who don't even smoke. Just there's some benefit that comes with it. I was just doing it because I like it, but yeah, cocaine, same thing. I I mean, coca, coca leaves in Peru. That's true. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've chewed coca leaves hiking. So the vasoconstrictors help at altitude, but not with the cold. Yeah, exa- huh. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because huh. I guess it can help if it constricts your blood, then you're using less oxygen. Maybe, maybe if, it, hmm. if it's like that. I've I don't know the science behind it, but most of the Sherpas up there were smoking cigarettes. Oh yeah, wow. Up until Camp Four, it's insane. <laughs> Uh, oh really? Yeah, they're hitting, they were they were smoking even at Camp Four. Yeah, they, well, Dude, these guys. But then, like to smoke, athletes. you would have to like leave your tent, which I feel like. Yeah, they were leaving their tents. Or and would some people just be hotboxing their tent? With it was like sitting in a tent with the uh, flap open, just smoking. Oh outside. yeah, yeah. Now Taking when smoke when you slept at degrees. when you slept at Camp Four, did you have to sleep with your with your oxygen mask on? Yeah, and Camp Three, and that is brutal because it's like such a massive thing on your face. Yeah. And imagine if like you turn over the wrong way as you're sleeping and like it comes off and you just die in your sleep without realizing. Mm-hmm. It's terrifying. Yeah. Oh, I, I did confirm that Grace uh, summited Everest, but she did use oxygen. Wow. Pathetic. So, well, no, I, <laughs> I think it must have just been a rough year with the conditions. Because, yeah, there were a few people that were planning on doing it without 
without O2, but a just lot of people got sick. The weather was not amazing. Yeah. Um, but at least because that one year, I think it was 2019 when they had like, there were too many traffic jams up there at yeah. the summit. And that's why a lot of people died. And they were worried about oh. that for this year because they gave out so many permits. But um, it seems like there's been like no complications with the traffic jams. Is that this when year? that no. Lithuanian guy died? Because it's during yeah, the traffic jams? Like, yeah. like you have this much walkway to walk on. And if you're trying to like walk around someone and you undo your oh safety, you can God. just. It's that that much. It's literally this. My feet are too big for Everest. <laughs> <laughs> I have trouble. I have trouble with bad stairs. Yeah, that's the reason but, you'll never climb. Yeah, <laughs> yep, that's it. Yep, that's it. Sorry, I couldn't go. <laughs> Qu quite a few people died this year, actually. Like I, I keep hearing about new deaths. Yeah. I keep making up better excuses of not going to Everest. <laughs> Billy, <laughs> no one's like forcing you to go. You just yeah. like don't have to. You don't even need no, an I, excuse. I, I feel. I feel. I don't know. I kind. I want to do it, but then I'm like, fuck. I'm going to think I'm hallucinating and tweak out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to climb with you then. I don't even know if anyone's invited you. Like, you don't even have an invite. No, just in, I'm, like, one day. Well, you don't I necessarily might, need an invite, no. but you, I'm really you would I, need some money. I'm really hoping yeah. that at one point in my smaller life. smaller feet. Yeah, yeah. I, like, yeah. like I'm, like, I have free time with a bunch of money. I don't know when this is, but hopefully mm -hmm. one day that no, happens. Yeah, for sure. And I'm <laughs> able to do all this. I feel Not like you there have yet. Yeah. yeah. Not there yet. No, that's fine. <laughs> well. Free That's time crazy. and funding. Free time, you might have. You, but the, <laughs> right, it's hard because your your athletic prime is is like yeah. right now. But yeah, but there are climb, yeah right? yeah there's surprised. A, yeah, yeah like sixty year olds climb yeah. a lot right. Mm -hmm. I think the record the guy was eighty three. Some Japanese guy eighty three. Okay, oh like Japanese people <laughs> age differently. That's yeah, true. They, yeah. very true. They are built different. That's crazy. When it comes to old age. I couldn't I imagine think, doing that yeah. in though. Holy shit. I'm pretty sure Okinawa, Japan is where people <laughs> live the longest on the planet. <laughs> Actually, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's wild. Um, yeah, so who knows if I'll do it. I would like to climb a mountain. Maybe I'll start with Kilimanjaro because that's just a week trip you can do in seven days. Or Vincent in Antarctica this season. Uh, yeah. That'd be I would, a badass mountain to start with. I would do that. I mean, just to go to Antarctica would be cool. Yeah. That, and that would be the cherry on top. Antarctica is yeah. a special place. It is one of those places. It's probably the closest place to a different planet. 100%, yeah. 100%. Yeah. You're, you're ready for Mars. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I, joking aside a lot of my colleagues like are like you're, you're the mars you're yeah. the one <laughs> yeah dude you're gonna be on you're gonna get to mars one day and be like know that guy <laughs> <laughs> we could do another new, new another yeah. episode <laughs> when, two yeah. years like you you got starlink there <laughs> mars link we will have starlink it'll be a separate constellation but yeah it'll definitely be there just be like <laughs> I, I knew he was going to mars the whole time <laughs> i saw it at him from the jump he was totally gonna be a mars guy <laughs> i'd go to the moon <laughs> Moon before moon Mars, cool. super close. Are they yeah. going to try to do the moon before Mars or just straight to Mars? We're going to land on the moon and probably try to set some stuff up there before we go. What's to Mars? the timeline on that, you think? That's like next couple of years. Nice. Yeah. And Are they going to try to colonize it? Not colonize, yeah. but definitely yeah. put some permanent bases and Yeah, because I think mm -hmm. it's probably pointless. Because can you terraform the moon? No, no. Yeah, it doesn't have the. Yeah, it's not worth it. It doesn't have its own atmosphere. Yeah, and Mars has water already and other stuff that makes it much better. Huh. What if you get to Mars and just, like, you just realize it stinks? Like, like literally? Like, <laughs> no one's smells better, so bad? No one realizes it just smells like shit. It smells like shit, and it's like, oh, fuck. Like, you have to wait two years. Oh, God. <laughs> it just smells so bad. <laughs> like, we'll get used to it. Nope. <laughs> Been here for six that, months. That would be so brutal. Oh, my God. Yeah. Just so shitty. Wait, so, so I mean, here it says they're going to open a space hotel by 2027. Yeah, that's another project. There's a lot of stuff going on in the space industry right now. Yeah. So, I mean, I think if we live to the age of 70, at least, um, uh, hopefully we all live longer hopefully, than yeah. 70, uh, like we might, we'll probably have an opportunity. The men in my family conk out at 78 usually. Okay. So that's, that's my timeline. <laughs> well, that's, that's my timeline. At least it's nice to know exactly when you're going to die. There's yeah. like a sample size of four. <laughs> really? 78. Yeah. Four people. Have so it's like, uh, I know it's kind of comforting. So. All right. Well, <laughs> use your time wisely. Yeah. What if like Mars, like 
there's like a frequency and you get there and just your ears are ringing the whole time. That would also suck. <laughs> like no one knows. Or all these things at once. Like it smells like shit. Your well, actually, ears are ringing. The I Mars we... rover could hear, but it couldn't smell. No. It couldn't smell. So actually, smell the Mars rover can't because without an atmosphere, there's nothing for sound to travel through. Like sound needs air. So like oh. even if you were there right now, if you didn't have a like, suit on or anything, there's nothing to hear. Yeah. And I wouldn't worry about the smell because you're going to be like wearing something over your head if you're outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you'll get used to it. Yeah. yeah. The body can adapt. Well, I think I think now's a good time to wrap it up. Yeah. Hope everyone enjoyed the the extra dosing. Thank you to Tyler and Donnie and Michelangelo for yeah. bringing their stories. And uh you'll have to try some more mad honey. I've got it on my desk. I <laughs> I would do it. Wow. Yeah, in a small dose. Yeah. I don't know if like, I could podcast. I want it so yeah. Is it worth is it worth it though? Cuz like you you but my favorite story from the entire trip is Michelangelo coming down the next morning. He's like, yeah, like there was a point where Donnie was laying on the floor in his back and he looked up and goes, call the hospital. And <laughs> like, I don't. Yeah. I, I mean, well. You like one, overdosed. One yeah. Teaspoon. I overdosed. But, but then I did like one teaspoon last Friday and I didn't feel a thing. So it's like, I need huh. to find like a happy medium where I can feel the effects and not the, be on the floor. I do way less drugs than you do though. Like the, none. So yeah. The altitude could have made it worse. Like well, a, no, cause stronger. I was doing it in Kathmandu, which is like lower than Denver. It's not very high. Mm. I would try it. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go take some now. <laughs> I, yeah, I do recreate. I, I couldn't do it while podcasting. It, no, you it, cannot. It made me very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> or just like just like try to act normal yeah um yeah That's well it. sweet cool. thanks guys thanks mackenzie thank thanks, you mad dog for of doing course. an extra podcast thank you in the nice. week thank you listeners bye, bye.